I've got this e-bike and there are things I like and things I don't like so much about it and I'm going to tell you all about it right now. Hello e-bike riders, especially those of you who ride the electric XP 3.0 folding bike. I thought I would give you my 62-year-old perspective on this bicycle. I have uh, 20 years of cycling experience. My husband has cycled his whole life and about 20 years ago kind of really got back into it and I thought that I should also so we could go ride together. I have a cross bike and I have a mountain bike. I am a competent and confident cyclist. So I was really looking forward to getting um, the e-bike. And when we got the e-bike <laughs> and he put it together, he went for a test drive and came back and I did this and went, oh my gosh, this bike is so heavy. So I was a little trepidatious of the weight of the bike. And then when I got on the bike and tried to start from a stopped position, it was uh, a real disaster. I was so um, worked up about the weight of this bike and the power of this bike that I was completely uh, frightened of it. I kept it in pedal assist zero to start out. It's just too heavy and awkward. And I was just like, I'm sure anybody that saw me trying to start this bike was like, what is with this old lady and this bicycle? So then I put it in pedal assist one and would try to ride this bicycle. Say we were on a bike trail and we were doing a road crossing and there was a ton of traffic. So I try to get on this bicycle and pedal and then the pedal assist would kick in. And while it's not very fast, it feels like, you know, zero to 60 in one second. So I just, I just didn't like riding this bike. I could not figure it out. And then one day I read a comment like on the electric bike forum that said that the lady kept it in PS pedal assist one and then just lightly hit the throttle, which is perfect because as you're hitting the throttle, you can just slide up on that bike seat and pedal. And <laughs> it's the perfect answer for me anyway. So I put it in pedal assist one, give it a little throttle, slide up on this seat, and I honestly couldn't be happier. I don't know why I never thought of it, but that has solved my starting problem. Stopping, now that we have the hydraulic disc brakes, is a dream. The upgrade. On the old brakes, the me mechanical disc brakes, we live in western North Carolina in the southern Appalachians. It's steep hills. The road we live on is steep. And I just felt like there was no way I could ride down that hill and stop in the manner that I needed to. But we got the new front tire that came with the hydraulic disc brakes. And man, um, you stop on a dime. We tested them out, the upgrade versus the um, non-upgraded 3.0. But I was afraid to really lay on these and go over the front of the bike. But I have no fear that uh, these brakes will slow me down and stop me when I need to stop on a dime. And I don't know if any everybody knows this and it just was me that didn't know it. When I got my mountain bike, which has uh, mechanical disc brakes, the guy told me that I was supposed to, you know, I always used uh, just the back brake. I never touched the front brake. But he said with the disc brakes, I needed to use both. So I got used to using both brakes um, on my mountain bike with the disc brakes. And I, I don't know, maybe that's just a hint for some of you, maybe like me who didn't know that, that they are, you know, should be used in tandem. Uh, but so now stopping and starting for me are super easy. Riding the bike has always been 
pretty re- easy and enjoyable. Uh, you know, I start in P, pedal assist one, and I work my way up to two or three. I like to cruise at like 12 to 14 miles an hour, which is two and three, um, because I want to pedal. I want, that's about what we ride when we're on our regular bikes. That's the speed I like to go. And I just wear a regular cycling helmet. I'm not doing 20 or 25 on this bike intentionally. Um, you know, <laughs> something's chasing me. I'm trying to outrun. And so on the gear shifter, I was so hung up about the whole rest of this bike that I kind of forgot that there was even a gear shift on it. Um, until I was struggling to get going. And so sometimes I would drop it down into two and try to have an easier start. But now that I start with the throttle, it's easy for me to just leave it in four or five, wherever, wherever it is I'm riding. I like to I like to be able to pedal. I like to get the exercise. I need the exercise. So I use the gear shift to find a good uh, sweet spot for me to con- to pedal and ride and not just use the pedal assist. I never use the throttle while I'm riding. I just I just don't. Coming up our steep driveway or maybe going up a steep hill, I might give it a little a little boost. But for the most part, I keep my hand off it. We haven't changed the bike a whole lot. We got the comfort seats with the bike, but we both knew as soon as we saw them that we probably were not going to like the seat. My biggest problem with those comfort seats is they're so wide, they keep you, when you're on the seat, they keep you from putting your leg down. And so like you're having to tip the bike over and or jump off it to get your feet on the ground. And so with my little seat or with my the seat that was on my cross bike, I, I mean, I can sit on my seat and, and still I can even be flat foot without this being tipped very much. What I have on this bike is a women's specific. The company is SSR. Yes, it is small, and yes, it's not quite as padded as maybe that comfort seat is, but I love this seat. I love the little seat like this that's on my mountain bike, and I think if you haven't tried a women's specific seat, um, you should try it. I think you will. I think you'll find that you uh, really like it. The let's see, Chuck put a water bottle cage on it for me. Put one on his his too, and then. He had to change my light from the light that came with the bike because I had a pretty ridiculous uh, wipeout. We were in really deep sand. That was before I remembered I had a throttle. I felt the bike going down, and of course, I was just holding on for dear life. And as I was going down, I hit that throttle, and the bike... This went completely backwards, and I was I had done an endo. The cables were all twisted. <laughs> I didn't know what I had done, um, so Chuck had to come to my rescue and, and fix all of that. I guess that while I have now come to love this bike, my problem with it is still the weight. I think it's 67 pounds. Um, my other two bikes, you know, I can lift up and... Uh, move. Used to maybe even be able to lift with one hand. I really can't even lift this bike. This bike is um, uh, a beast. I also can barely even handle the levers to take it down, to fold it. Maybe in time these will get easier to use with with use, but then of course you don't want them to be too easy because you don't want the bike to fold on you while you're riding. Truthfully, I can't fold this bike by myself. Chuck has to fold it. And two people can't fold it. You just get in the way of one another. Chuck folds the bike. We have the totes. I don't know, 50-gallon maybe totes that we got at Home Depot. Um, so he folds it up. He, I get the tote ready. He lifts it into the tote. And then we discovered that he's got a creeper from when he used to change the oil in our cars. And then we, he lifts that tote up onto the creeper and we just roll it wherever we need to and then we both lift it into the van and both take it out chuck can do it on his own but if i'm there you know why make him struggle i I do love it i wish it was about 20 pounds less so uh, that's my opinion and my ideas and what we've done 
And if you have anything, um, any ideas, any hints, please share them with me. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to try to answer them. And um, I wish you happy writing. And if you would, um, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.